Good afternoon and good morning for those of you on the West Coast. I'm so glad you're here for our second collective TA event for the Laser TLC. Our first event was early in November when we met virtually and John McKay presented a deeper dive into the Learn, Innovate, and Improve, the LI Squared model. Today we'll be building on that work with a focus on stakeholder engagement, designing and refining your site stakeholder engagement strategy. I know that each site has been working with your coach and meeting as a team to either begin or refine your efforts to identify and prioritize your stakeholders. Today's session is to further support that work. Before we begin this session, let's take a minute to acknowledge our teams on the call. And I'm going to ask uh, each team leader to introduce yourself, your team, and any team members that have joined you. And let's start with uh, Washington State. Is anyone here from Washington State? Lori and Brittany, I see both you here. Either one of you can pick up the mantle. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> Hi, my name is Brittany Miller. I'm with Washington State. Um, Lori is also here from Washington State. Good morning. I You just put me on the spot. I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to know everybody's names now. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm Lori and me and Brittany are on the team. As you see Donnell well as, as well. Okay. Thank you. And I think and my dogs are barking. Dog. Sorry. <laughs> so. No worries. No worries. Thank you, Brittany and Lori. Uh, do we have uh, anyone here from North Dakota? Hello, Thanks. everybody. I'm oh, sorry. Hello. Go ahead. Sorry about that. Hello, everybody. This is Joan Schatz. I'm with North Dakota, and with me today is Bianca Bell. Hi, everyone. Hi, Lisa. Good to see you again. Good to see you too, Bianca. Great. Glad you guys both are here. Uh, North Carolina. Alex, do you have any teammates with you yet? I know Gretchen's here, and I think Shawanda I saw as well. I'm here. Marjorie here. Hey. Also. Excellent. Thank you so, so much. Hey, Adrian and Rice is here for North Carolina as well. Hi, Adrian. And I think Nicola is on as well. I saw her picture. We couldn't hear you, Nicola. Well, shout out to Nicola. Um, Larimer County. Do we have any representatives yes. from Larimer? Yes. Hi, this is Jessica with Larimer County. And with us today, it looks like we have Christine Fenwick, Nancy Kelly, Jordan Mancini, and we also have Carl and Hannah. And I, I don't believe they're on. I don't see them. But feel free to speak up if you're here, Carl and Hannah. Well, maybe they'll join us before we're, we're finished. Great. Yes. And I'm sorry, I don't know why my camera does, is turns, it does that sometimes. It's blacked out. It periodically has issues, so I apologize in advance. No, no worries. We were talking about maybe uh, earlier, earlier today, we were talking about maybe a, a string of tin cans would work better than the <laughs> activity today. I understand. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> hello, this <Sure>. is <laughs> hello. This is Nicola from North Carolina. Can you all hear me now? Yes, yes we, we got you. Well, good good afternoon. <laughs> um, again, <laughs> Nicola from North Carolina, and with me we have Keisha Gorham and our newest um, TANF employee, Renee Smith. We're all in the room together. Just want to let you all know. I was here and I was trying to speak, but I was having some speaker issues. I guess. No, no worries. Thank you, Nicola. I call them the cyber gremlins, but we're, we're, we're glad you're here and we can hear you. <laughs> Thank you so Did much. Anyone... Great. Did anyone join us from Chippewa Creek? Um, we just double, 
we just emailed again Elaine, but no one is currently on, but hoping that someone can make it. Okay, okay. Well, we'll have this. This is recorded, so they'll be able to hear the information. Great. Again, I thank you all for joining us. I know everybody's rushing to get ready for the holidays. I can't believe this is December and the end of the year, but we're here and we're still working, and we're so glad that you joined us this afternoon. I am going to turn this over to Jeanette, who the project director for the Laser TLC, and she'll start our training off. Jeanette? Great. Thanks, Lisa. Um, appreciate everyone. Welcome. Good afternoon. Good morning, whatever. Um, I do want to echo a little bit of what Lisa has just said. Um, what you see here is today we're really going to be focusing on stakeholder engagement and a strategy around stakeholder engagement. And this really builds on the work that um, John has spent uh, a lot of energies and efforts through the initial convening and then in our early November collective TA event um bli squared refresher really looking at um you know uh, uh, the, the entire framework and had covered a, a lot of work around identification of stakeholders who needs to be at the table and also when they need to be at the table and there's been a lot of work i know done by the teams uh with their coaches about that um, about really that identification of the who and the why uh we want these stakeholders here and it's critically important um, as we walk through and as all of you walk through and advance your change agendas and the innovations that you want to put in place and the things that you want to kind of focus in on doing a little differently is that identifying and engaging stakeholders is really the second objective of LI squared. It is a, it is a critical component that really lets you um, and, and plays a critical role downstream in all the activities that you'll be doing in the phases, the next two phases of implement and improve. So today we're gonna spend some time really moving from, as I said, the identification of the who and the why of engagement into more about the how of engagement. Um, I know many of you have either worked with your coaches or site teams individually and spent some energies around that the pre-work activity or this pre-session activity that was shared with you. And I, I wanna show an example of stakeholder mapping because that's really um, the next slide, Casey. Uh, that's kind of where it's the beginning of the work to be done. Um, we had you think this isn't exactly, this is really uh, adapted from um, a, uh, uh, strategy management consulting group that does a lot of work with private sector but also public sector about aligning uh, stakeholders with visions and vision and purpose and action planning and strategic plans and what we had when we talked last time was not last time but the work that the coach had worked with the sites on it was about putting your stakeholders in two separate buckets internal and external stakeholders because sometimes how you engage with them really is completely different um, if it's an internal in, internal stakeholder versus external. We also had you do some thinking around what is the uh, what what does how do you prioritize this? And because stakeholder mapping is really something that will allow you to figure out how much engagement, how much communication and what kind of consideration you need in both the consulting and decision-making phases of, of engagement. So this was an example that came from the field about uh, plotting, plotting stakeholders by both influence and impact, which is we, we had a more refined um, table that we shared with, with, um, with all the sites last month that was again on the influence and impacts, impact uh, continuum, but I think we also had a medium, that it was low, medium, and high. But here's just an example, a look at, at if someone, if a stakeholder has high impact, they're gonna be impacted greatly by the work that you're doing, or the changes that you're making, and also a high influence on that work about the desire to make sure that you're regularly engaging them and keeping them satisfied. And if you look over high impact and low in influence, you still need to inform completely, but monitor closely what that looks like and how you do that. So 
we're, um, anyway, this was just an example of a stakeholder mapping, and I know each of you have done some work, some either initial work around stakeholder engagement mapping or re re revised and refined what you've already done. Um, so I want to take just a couple minutes and, and Casey Gray, next slide. Was there any real key takeaways from the exercise that, that you did in getting ready for today's session? Um, any share any two major ahas or, or, um, or things that your, your team learned in the exercise or that you worked on? I know and I've seen a couple of the different products from the, from the coaches, um, so don't be shy. Mm, very shy, shy group. I can't believe it. Kent, I've seen stuff from Washington State. Was this an exercise that allowed you to prioritize a little bit or have any new thinking? Um, you, you, you did, but, but before I see if, if Lori or anybody from Washington wants to pipe in, you know, we, uh, because of poor coaching and time mismanagement, we ran out of time in our online group session to all talk about it. So what was in the work product that, that uh, I sent forward was just raw information that folks put in in a Google Doc independently. So we've not had a chance as a group to really process that yet. Um, so, but, but with, uh, uh, with that caveat, um, if uh, Lori or Melissa or anybody from the Washington team wants to comment on or start on that and the, and the conversation we began, um, feel free to jump in. Hi, Ken. This is Donnell. I think that one thing I noticed that um, was interesting to me and made me step back a little bit was to think about maybe out of the box of a headquarters employee as such I am and many of us on our group were and uh, in working with the field staff who are you know, the hardest working people that we have here at DSHS in Washington State and listening to what their prioritization was was very interesting for me. Although we didn't get done, like you said, but I'm not going to say it because of poor coaching. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, it was an exercise to get you thinking. And, and that's about what today is, too. It's about, uh, you know, how, how does this, what does this mean for me? And what does this mean for our team? And what does it mean for our change agenda? So uh, I appreciate that, that the, work, the work is a, a work in progress. Anybody else? Wanna this, this is Melissa with Washington State, and I agree with Donnell. It was, you know, I was out for a couple of days last week, so I looked at the document once I think more of my team were able to feed into it, and um, it was just kind of interesting to see kind of the different perspectives, and um, and also trying to do the rating, like the high, medium, low on the influence, like that was tricky, <laughs> and then comparing the different responses, so it was an interesting activity. All right, I, I hear that Christine uh, from Larimer County, you're, you're ready to jump in too here. I just thought I'd throw out there, I thought it was kind of interesting when you look at things through the lens of influence and impact, it really does change the way you make prioritize things. You may have done it a little differently if you didn't have kind of those definitions to, to guide you. So that was kind of an interesting piece for me. And that is really the core of stakeholder mapping, right? Is to, to, to really make sure the work that you're doing is most impactful, right? That you're, you're making the right connections and, and thinking about it uh, from, with your stakeholders. All right, anybody else? North Carolina want to say anything or we're going to turn to, actually, um, I'm going to turn this over to my colleague, Mark, Mark Manis. Uh, we, we're going to have a, a presentation from, um, I don't know if it's a presentation, but a sharing from North Dakota about some of the things that they've done because they spent the last year really looking at uh, stakeholder engagement through their uh, strategy, strategy doing 
uh, win, uh, window. Mark? Hi, everyone. And we're, we're really fortunate today to have uh, Joan and Bianca from North Dakota, who in fact were intimately involved in the uh, strategic doing initiative over the past uh, year or so with, uh, with uh, significant um, OFA support. And so um, we're gonna hear from them about um, sort of what their stakeholder engagement activities consisted of and some of the major learnings that they walked away from. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Joan and Bianca for their, their approximately 10 minute presentation on this. Yes, and we're going to try and be as, as con concise as we can be, but I tend to ramble on and, and Mark was very specific and he said, Bianca, you've got to get it down to 10 minutes because um, it takes away from the group time. So I, I am going to try my best to power through it and, and give enough time. Um, for us to do the group work that needs to be done. Um, thanks, Mark, for inviting Joan and I to talk. I know that we're really passionate about the work that, that we are doing in North Dakota and very grateful for the support that we've received from OFA Peer TA. Um, as you mentioned, um, we have, for the last year since the end of 2020, um, been working. Um, and initially, our request to OFA Peer TA was to seek out guidance on how do we begin the process of modernizing our TANF program. Um, you know, when we asked for the support, we had wanted to come up with a way to, to get a good snapshot, a good environmental scan, I guess we were calling it at that time. Um, that would capture the current state of our services and really understand our customer's experience. And we wanted to use this information to inform any future planning that we, that we wanted to implement um, or strategies that we wanted to implement. Um, so OFA, um, PRTA recommended the use of the strategic doing process. Uh, this is a framework and it really provided structure for us. Uh, when it was introduced, it was really framed as a way to create, um, you know, trusted partnerships and build equity and voice, which was also really important to us. It had been a while since we had brought our stakeholders around the table to have discussions. Um, so we really were concerned about, you know, how do we get people around the table and have these meaningful conversations. Um, so to kick this off, we met internally with some state staff and OFA Peer TA to really focus on our approach. Um, we developed a framing question and you can see it here on our slide and really the framing question um, asked for our stakeholders to think pretty broadly, like how can we make the most impact for people, right? If we had the best services in North Dakota, um, what would that look like and, and how would it look different than what we're doing today? And, and that was really our guidepost and it, and it centered us around a common goal. Um, we really tried to use our stakeholders um, assets. So as a part of the strategic doing process, there was a, uh, uh, and we're really grateful for the facilitation that we got from OFA for the process. And I don't know if I've said that enough, but um, you know, our facilitator helped us to uh, hold a conversation with the stakeholders to help them identify what skills do you have and, and what can you contribute to this? This is something that we all feel passionate about, but what skills do you have and, and how can they be contributed to the, the work that we would like to achieve together? Um, we ended up uh, um, then moving into the next phase of the strategic doing process, which was the pathfinding projects. And we broke out into two separate um, groups. We had a large group of stakeholders, so we, we did need to kind of break out into two smaller groups. Our first group, um, which is Team One, it's also Team Big Bird. Um, there's uh, some fun stories behind that, but I'll, to keep it brief, we had um, a, a survey uh, that was done as an icebreaker that involves Sesame Street characters. And so we had Team Big Bird and Team Elmo, um, Team One and Team Two, and Team Big Bird focused on learning from other states. They hosted three virtual site visits um, and really had an objective to learn about strategies that improve access 
uh, to TANF assistance um, and gain insight on what types of policies and procedures um, should be reviewed in order for us to, to understand, you know, what are some opportunities for change. Um, Team two focused on understanding customer experience and staff experience to get a sense of the current needs of the TANF population uh, with the goal to connect that information back to opportunities for changes in policy and practice and to understand barriers for accessing services. For the most part, I will say our stakeholders really championed our work. We were really lucky. Um, we had really good engagement from the start, really great facilitation, and everybody felt like they had a purpose. We're still right now in the process of doing this work, so um, we've got some, some insights that we're still trying to understand, but I'll go ahead and turn it over to Joan so she can talk about some of our takeaways. So what we have learned during the process, we learned that stakeholders had their own areas of expertise and we were successful because we were able to engage them in those areas. That was very beneficial to us. Um, we had internal stakeholders, our own staff, child support, children and family services, vocational rehabilitation. We also had external stakeholders, our employment contractors who work with our individuals in the work requirement component, school system, Head Start, our frontline staff, the county staff, and we had customers involved. Um, we found that our stakeholders were willing to dig in and really helped us complete work. We kept them informed of what we were doing we did this by engaging them in emails, inviting them to meetings, and we scheduled meetings around their schedules, and we found that as beneficial. During this strategic doing process, they were involved in all the meetings, and we found that we were actually shifting our internal planning meetings to meetings that engaged solely with the stakeholders. Um, today, we find that our stakeholders remain actively engaged. Um, if they are not available for a meeting, they call, they ask if they can get the notes, they call and ask if it's going to be recorded, they remain actively engaged. So for us, it's been very successful and we would not have gotten as far along as we have without their involvement. Well, thank you, Joan and Bianca, for that, I know, brief, but sort of highlights the flavor of what you've done and certainly as always uh, members of other teams interested in getting more detail or probing a little more deeply um, i know bianca and joan welcome your outreach to them to get additional details and information um, let's move on to with the presentation so uh as we as we begin Spend our time thinking about stakeholder engagement strategy. Um, we conducted a, uh, a significant literature review. We looked at a broad range of materials from multiple sources. We looked at, at resources from university institutes, from companies, from groups of federal grantees, from journal articles. We looked at federal agency reports and documents from institutions like RAND, Deloitte, the Urban Institute, and Child Trends. Um, and all of those sort of sources uh, came together um, to allow us to put together um, our stakeholder engagement strategy, which we present to you on the next slide. So the, our, our our stakeholder engagement framework is um, really um, grounded in, um, informed by, again, informed by the literature review. And the literature review was really organized to identify and extract, as uh, Jeanette mentioned earlier, evidence informed and best practice, and to try to come up with evidence informed and best practice guidelines. And the literature review and our analysis of it. Uh, thought it was worth pointing, pointing to four distinct elements for, for uh, laser TLC sites to consider in order to formulate and implement their effective stakeholder engagement strategy. Um, the first element is uh, effective relationships 
in real estate, we know the, the line is location, location, location. For stakeholder engagement, the, the key line is probably relationship, relationship, relationship. Effective relationships are really the, 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 the connective tissue allowing things to, allowing stakeholder engagement strategy to be implemented effectively. There's also the second key element is effective communications. It's about sending, receiving information. It's about bi-directional, multi-directional communication. It's about making sure that you and your priority internal and external stakeholders are privy to and have access to the best available information to review, to consider. The third element is effective consultation. This really entails the important exchange of ideas, the offering of advice, raising issues to consider. Um, what are the most important issues that need to be addressed? Issues that potentially need to be sidestepped, avoided, or even put on hold for a while because certain issues or certain areas require priority attention. And the fourth element that's a part of the stakeholder engagement framework is that of effective decision making. It's about um, taking advantage of your relationships, your consultative efforts, and your communications to make decisions with your priority stakeholders to improve and advance your, your laser TLC work. Next slide, please. So what we do in the next is we're gonna, we're gonna, and, and I want to make a point about the previous um, thing. We, we showed the diagram as a circle, as a continuous loop, but I want to point out that in your world, the sequencing or order of the, of, of the, the elements may play out a little bit differently. So I think if we actually took a step back and thought about it, my guess is we we're probably engaging all four of these elements effective relationships, effective communication, effective consultation, and effective decision making, we're probably engaging in them simultaneously. But now we want, what we want to do is take a little bit of a deeper dive into, um, into each of the elements. Um, what it will take to uh, create high quality, positive and productive stakeholder engagement strategies. And for each of these elements that we just, I just identified, we want to share a couple of guiding principles to advise and, and, and provide some shape and form to your thinking and behavior and several action drivers to help you think about how to shape and mold what you end up doing. And again, a reminder that what we'll be sharing with you is evidence and best practice informed from the literature review and the synthesis of that literature review that undergirds this, this, uh, this strategy engagement framework. Um, there's also an annotated bibliography that we are putting together and we will, that, that was used to, that was the essence of the literature review and we will be sharing that uh, annotated bibliography with all of you on this call and all of your teams shortly. So let's start with effective relationships. Again, it's multidimensional. It's operating at multiple levels. It's interpersonal. It's within groups. It's across groups. It shows that we want to show that you are, um, in terms of guiding principles, show that you are listening intently and are being attentive. And yes, we know people can tell when you are. And again, that the second guiding principle, that, that famous or infamous slogan, we all know what walk the talk means, but we also know it's easier said than done. And um, a couple of action drivers as you think about what, it, what, you, need to, what you need to do to, in order to, to foster effective relationships. It's important to have the needs of your needs, the stakeholder, your priority stakeholder needs, really clearly articulated and acknowledged. It's also critical to align yourself with what motivates a particular stakeholder. For example, your caseworkers can be motivated or maybe motivi motivated by successes that they've experienced or seen with particularly challenging clients, and they want to make them part of your standard practices, honor and respond to those motivations. Another driver, make sure you're getting on the same page 
with with issues and concerns um, and that and that you're you're understanding what they are. You've got a clear understanding of what they are. Um, for example, and then be prepared to talk about and get comfortable with uncertainties. Many uncertainties in the work that we're doing. There might be a government leadership council that may not buy into or approve of what you're thinking about. That needs to be understood by all of the involved parties as you work through your process. And lastly, you need a critical mass of champions uh, among your priority stakeholders to accomplish your action plan objectives. Maybe you decide you need a, re a regular Zoom meeting of your champions to build a necessary report and collective action. Um, all of these things are important to think about as you think about the effective relationship component of your strategy. Let's turn to the next slide about effective communication. This is the, found, the foundation for effective exchange. It's grounded in honest and transparent um, interactions. Your colleagues and stakeholders also possess very different communication styles. You know that. And you need to be accepting and adaptive of those very different communication styles as you work, work through with them. In terms of action drivers, be clear, very clear about what information is going to be exchanged, what is going to be, be shared. Um, for example, certain external stakeholders may benefit from access to data in some of your agency's information systems, may need to work through the process of getting them access. Also, Agree on the diverse and preferred channels that, for communication with your stakeholders. Is it emails? Is it calls? Are there preferred um, virtual platforms that people want to use? Consider the frequency, how often you want to make use of those channels to ensure effective communication. Respond in timely and appropriate ways. For example, uh, timely does not always mean immediately. An information request may, re may have to be moved uh, up your, your approval chain. It may need to go through a series of internal approvals. Make sure that is known. Um, make sure that is known and understood. And lastly, um, the basis for effective exchange and teamwork is to keep the conversations going. You'll do better collectively. You'll have better communications if you keep the conversations going. Some of the principles and drivers to think about in terms of effective communication. Let's move to the third element, effective consulting. This, assess, this really addresses the substantive function of thinking and talking through ideas, suggestions, advice, receiving counsel with you and your priority internal and external stakeholders. It's the, really the, the, the meat of the work that, you, that you'll be focusing on. Some of the principles. Show your appreciation and respect for your, your, the input from your, the, your, your important strategy priority strategic stakeholders. If this is done well, it creates the basis for collective action um, and success with meeting and accomplishing your site plan objectives. Just, it, it really helps build that basis for working effective together and for collective action. Some of the important drivers to think about. Reach agreement on the subject or topics for consultation. For example, an expanded virtual system and increasing autom automated functions um, for certain tasks, such as um, may, may require you to actively involve your IT department or certain, certain staff with specific technical expertise within your IT department. So make sure that you are um, paying attention to who needs to be involved in what you're going to be focusing on as part of the consultative process. As ideas and suggestions are put forth, make sure, I'll, I know we, we always try to do this, but to reinforce respond in ways that are construct, constructive and keep the consultation on track. 
try to make sure as the consultative process works itself out, try to identify areas for collaboration and coordination. For example, how can consulting with site placement coordinators or other external partners lead to strengthen client experiences moving forward as they, as they, as they work through their job placements? And um, the last action driver to consider when differences naturally emerge and differences as you're exchanging advice and ideas, when differences emerge, try to make sure that there is an agreed to process in place so that you can work through and work and, and get, get to a, a place of shared understanding and resolution of when these differences emerge that allow you to move forward in an, in an effective way. And then the last element that we're suggesting that you think about and consider is this area of effective decision making. You've got effective relationships in place. You've got effective communication channels working and working well. You've got an effective consultative process um, working for the better for the benefit of you and the strategic stakeholders as you build your stakeholder strategy. The last element to be concerned with is effective decision making. Make sure to include your priority internal and external stakeholders um, to make sure because they have an important impact on your strategy and strive for their active participation. And I think there are two steps to think about here. Make sure that you uh, maximize opportunities for inclusive and participatory decision making because I think we've come to realize over time that better decisions are made as a result of getting multiple perspectives and multiple ideas in, as part of the decision-making process. And step two, when you create those opportunities, take full advantage of those opportunities to ensure maximum and full participation. Shared and collective ownership of decisions increases the likelihood for success. In terms of action drivers, set your ground rules. For example, if your intent is to more effectively engage families, see to it that you have ground rules in place that are designed to actively engage them at critical points in the decision-making process. Make your decision-making procedures more streamlined, smooth, and clear. This will result in less frustration and it will result in more engaged stakeholders over time. Strive for consensus. It's not always attainable, but we know that it is preferred. But work hard to try to build the basis for consensus as part of your decision-making process. And ensure that you and your stakeholders are clear about your decision responsibilities. For example, urge you to think about committing to paper or codifying what you will do and what your supervisory staff would do or supervisors would do to make make sure that in order to schedule and design and develop a staff development training on enhancing, enhancing virtual client meetings that you, you and your supervisors and any other stakeholders would clear about what their responsibilities are, maybe at a time frame within which they would complete those responsibilities to see that that staff development training component is organized and in place. Certainly a lot of food for thought there. Again, I know much of this probably reminds you of things you already know, but as we walk through and to, did a synthesis of the relevant literature, these were the four elements that jump out at us as important for you to think about in your implementation teams with your priority internal and external strategic uh, stakeholders as you begin to build your strategy over the next couple of months as you work with your your stakeholders in powerful and meaningful and effective ways so let's shift to the next slide um, and now what we want to do for the for the lion's share for the next 35 for the next 35 40 minutes is to have a facilitated discussion and peer exchange on some of the ideas that were raised from the framework we're going to have you go into cross-site teams um, 
Casey Gray will be organizing this in a moment. There will be four breakout rooms. There will be a facilitator in each room. I will be one of the facilitators. Jeanette will be one of the facilitators. Nicole and Kent will also be facilitators. And we want you to spend uh, 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 35 minutes or 40 minutes or so thinking about what, what, what can you do to ensure effective relationships, effective communication, effective consultation, and effective decision making in working with your priority internal and external stakeholders. And at this moment, I'm going to turn it over to Casey Gray, who will get us moved into our breakout rooms. Great. Thank you, Mark. Um, I just chatted out the questions that are here on the PowerPoint. If you're a facilitator and you need these questions in your breakout group, you can just copy and paste them uh, over into the chat of the breakout room. So those are right there for you to grab quickly. Um, in just a moment, I'm going to uh, release the breakout room. You should get a pop up on your screen that will ask you to join the breakout room you've been assigned to. Um, if you have any. All, all of, all, we will be also recording the breakout room sessions. Uh, the facilitators will be pushing the record button to allow us it to be recorded. Yep, that's true. Thanks, Mark. Um, and then let's see. So you should have a pop up uh, on your screen that will ask you to join the room that you've been assigned to. And should you have any issues, you can find the breakout room button at the bottom of your Zoom window toolbar. Um, and you can always come back. Uh, to the main meeting session where I will be and I can help you uh, or you can summon me to that room if you need to. So if we're ready, Mark, I'll open these up. I think we're ready. Great. The, the, groups, <laughs> the groups are all the all back in the general session. Okay. Um, I just wanted to put it out there for for everybody. Um, any quick takeaways from our cross-site session? Any Anything uh, sites want to share? Lessons learned? Strategies? Uh -huh. Ahas? Well, you get into this big group and it... Uh, Everybody just gets quiet. Exciting takeaway. I'll talk. <laughs> this is Ronnie Sue from Washington. Hi, Ronnie Sue. Hi. So I think we had a lot of um, feedback around communi communication and consultation that. Um, for me kind of connected around both stakeholder expertise and stakeholders ways of doing communication sometimes and we didn't talk about this as a group but it's kind of my aha moment sometimes our stakeholders expertise also drives what kind of communication they use and so mm -hmm. being attentive to that um, can help foster both more effective consultation and build stronger relationships when we're paying attention to those, right. those, the relationship between those two things. Yep. Great. Great. Thank you for sharing. Anybody else? I know we're, we're running out of time here. Okay. All right. Um, with that, Lisa, I'm going to turn it to you for just some closing comments and announcements. Thanks, Liz. Thanks, um, Jeanette. I just wanted to let everyone know that, um, you, that Laser TLC was supposed to have ten sites, and we were, although we were very thankful and glad that you um, uh, nominated yourselves very timely, we have um, selected five additional sites who will be joining us. Um, they will be joining us this month and we might get together uh, as a group uh, next month. And the five sites are Pennsylvania, Kentucky, Anne Arundel County in Maryland. So Larimer, you have a, a uh, partner county now that, um, that you can bounce ideas off of. 
and two tribal TANA programs, Yurok Tribe and Scott Valley Band of Pomo Indians. The next collective TA will be January 11th, and that's when you will meet the other five sites. It'll be our first uh, event with all 10 sites together. Um, and we look forward to you engaging with um, the new sites. They bring a lot of diversity and ingenuity into, uh, or they will, into the laser TLC. So thank you so much. Um, I hope you have happy holidays, and I will turn this over to Casey Gray because immediately following this um, meeting, there will be uh, Casey Gray will be posting an evaluation of the session. Kay Casey Gray. Lisa, yes, I am going to be emailing out an evaluation shortly after this meeting closes um, to everyone who attended. So just keep your eyes on your email and it should only take just a couple of minutes. Okay. Thank you everyone and happy holidays. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks thank everyone. everyone for all your hard work. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Happy holidays.